So, a very quick look at the 585. Um, completely new model, uh, and as far as I can see, uh, with the exception of looking like the 550 Mark II, if you look at the starter cover here, just the general sort of look of it, it's got that look about it. It's a completely new platform. Um, there's a lot going on in here that's brand new. Okay, side cover, got captive knots, but now we have the captive knots are actually sleeved. I don't know if you can see that, all right. So they sit in, they're a bit more positive to go onto the stud. Similar uh, cover, same sort of shape cover as the 572, which gives good chip ejection, I've found anyway. Um, yeah, nice and sleek. Bit between the wide discharge and the more traditional, slightly curved in side covers that we're used to. Okay, that's fairly straightforward. Come on to this. Uh, you can see here, hopefully, you can see in there, no plates, solid casting, lovely bit of casting to the looks of it. Um, clutch drum looks much the same. It's uh, internal clutch, unlike the uh, 395s, which of course were external. So that's a bit of a departure for their bigger saws. Of course, this 86cc, I tend to think of it as a direct replacement for the 390 stroke 385. Um, it's been put in the 90cc category because it's 86. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's a, whatever you think yourself, really. So, fairly familiar Husqvarna look to it, handle, chain brake. So they've gone for one the same as the 390s. Uh, remember on the 395 you had the L-shaped affair, uh, which I found a nuisance. It used to get caught in brush and ah, just a bit of a, not a pain, but unnecessary. Okay, one thing I would say is I noticed on the blurb, you see that there? That's actually the serial number. Now, I don't know how long that will last, so I suppose you may want to take a photo of that or certainly record the number so that for any problems in the future, parts, etc., then you, at least you've got a definite record of it, uh, or even if it gets stolen, uh, perhaps, I know I'd be inclined to engrave it somewhere else. Anyway, so there we go. We're kind of used to this now, the primer bowl. Um, we come down, very similar AV mount to the 395s. You can just see in there the cable strap there, so if it fails, the saw isn't going to fall asunder. Uh, they've all got some sort of mechanism, haven't they, to stop that happening. But that's how it's done on this one. Again, easy to change. Look, uh, much different, much bigger fuel window now, no bad thing. Um, and the starter inside is the same principle as the 550 Mark II. Much bigger nylon wheel that engages, unlike the 572, which has the same uh, starter poles and uh, rotor as the 562, 560, etc. So we'll get in there. It's, um, yeah, the first thing I noticed when I got it out of the box was just how solid it feels. There's no, there's no sort of banging or clattering around. Yeah, real quality feel. Everything seems really well finished. That feels very thick, the finish on that. So let's have a look under that bonnet as it were. So again, heat separator there, the same as we first saw on the 572. So that's good, nice solid, fairly good bit of plastic there. And then there, the air filter again, again, we've become accustomed to that now with the 572, 550 Mark II, and now a retrofit for the 560s and 550s as a kit for that. Now, as you can see there, that's a nice big hole there. So plenty of air allowed to suck in, and I don't know how well you'll see in there. Sorry, the light isn't great. I just ran out of time today, but fairly typical strato carb, as in top butterfly, bottom butterfly in there. Um, but one thing you will notice there, I think, is the electrics. So we have a traditional, uh, or a traditional fashion, if you like, carburetor system but we still have the ability to read the saw. Now, I'm honestly not sure what that will tell you. There is also an option of putting a connector onto this, and it mounts down here, um, that allows a reading of the saw, how many hours it's done, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I don't know how much interest that would be. Certainly to a company, I'm sure it would be. One thing I did notice, they've gone to the small plug 
on this as opposed to the bigger plug on the 572 and that's actually accounted for the combi spanner which looks like a 395 one there it is the small end there don't get caught wet by that again you probably see there rearward tilted cylinder it looks lovely very well finished everything's just yeah everything's nice this here good solid rubber there nice catch for the ht leak yeah it's just nicely done um the muffler exhaust whatever you want to call it um stainless large exit sparks screen is still in there and i don't know if you notice but there's no lower bracketing on this which is a departure from norm screw there comes out and there's three mounting bolts so that will be interesting i imagine that might be something you might want to check now and again uh, other than that what more can i say as you can see this hasn't with the exception at the factory i haven't even started this yet i might give it a quick run now if not That'll, that's the uh, next instalment, I suppose. Okay, these come with the new X Tough Bar, replaceable nose, um, certainly a bit of uh, weight to it, as in it's solid. There's no flex in that. The only thing I did notice was on one of the oil holes, this one here, I think, there's a tiny little bit of the coating they've used. It was a tiny little bit in there. So just check that when you get them. Just to make sure you're getting the maximum flow and of course that's traditional Husqvarna adjustment for the oil down here sorry I've got pointed at that just down here okay folks I think that's more than enough for now for a quick rattle through lots to be looking at lots of newness as it were um yeah I can't wait to give this a go later on okay thanks